the guy who perpetually lived on the outside of everything. And it's strange how it is that, that the world could not get along with the holiest man who ever lived, and yet somehow it embraces you and me. These people who we hold up as being our, our heroes, as being courageous, as being the people who we follow, the world couldn't get along with any of them. It killed them, it shot them, or crucified them, or put them to death by the sword. And yet somehow when we come along, it gives us a big hug and says, you're with us, you're part of us. These are people who couldn't go, I mean, why is it that we expect, if we're going to do the right thing, why is it that we expect to be accepted everywhere? If you're being accepted everywhere, there's a really good chance you're not doing the right thing. And if you find yourself on the outside of things sometimes, you find yourself the target of the right kind of people, the right enemies, there's a really good chance that you're doing the right thing. But you're gonna pay for it. But that's part of the hero thing, isn't it? Because you're sacrificing yourself because let's face it, no greater love does anybody have but that they would give their life for their friends or that they would give their life for the right thing. Or they would give their right, or even worse, I'm sorry, even better, they would give their life for people who won't even know their names. And yet they give their life for them because of a principle, because of an ideal. And that's one of the things that makes us hate heroes so much. Because every hero is an ideal. And every ideal is a judge. By the way, that's the real question. If you want to be a hero, what are you willing to sacrifice in the process? Because that's the thing that we miss about heroes. It's a big part of the hero's journey, is sacrificing. Yeah. And so we can relate to heroes in the sense that they're sad, and we all have felt sad before. We can relate to heroes sometimes in the sense that they uh, get anxious or angry, and we've been anxious or angry before. That's pretty universal. The thing about the hero is that they, they help us to realize that we don't have to relate to them just in the sense of what we are, but that we can relate to them in the sense of what it is that they become, what they could become. This is why superheroes like, like Superman, okay? Yeah, he's fun. But can anybody in here actually be Superman? No. Like if a, you know, if a Superman can, can take bullets on his chin, but Superman can get can get shot, and it, all that gets messed up is his is his shirt. The rest of us can't do that. This guy has actual special superpowers, and so we can aspire to be like him in the sense that he's powerful, and we we'd like to become as powerful as possible. And yet he's also kind, and he seeks this thing right here to do the right thing. Now, if you look at Superman, you might say, well, it's easy for Superman to 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 do the right thing, but it's really not. Because imagine if you were like him, and you could you could fly, you could you had super power, you had super strength, you had you could shoot laser beams from your eyes. I wonder what kind of a person you would be. Would you be a person who does the right things, or would you be a person who uses that to your to your benefit? But of course, what on earth could you possibly get out of it? Money. But you can get that anyway, though. One. What's that? One. 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 Fun, yeah. I guess if that's your idea of fun, though. Not really. I, I really consider that if that's your idea of fun. If your idea of fun is not to just is is to build things up rather than destroy them, then having the ability to to destroy things won't appeal to you. Having yeah, having the ability to destroy things is only appealing to you if you if you have the desire to destroy things. Yeah, yeah. And and again, it's a pretty good Rorschach test. Because, like we're saying, imagine if you were Superman, what you would do. Would you, would you pursue the right thing? Because, I think as you said, you kind of connect these things you said, you know, to be a hero or to do the right thing as though these were synonymous. And there's probably something in our minds that it is synonymous. Because if you have the power of a hero, but you don't do the right thing, you do the wrong thing, what's that called? A villain. And remember from our archetypes, that's the shadow archetype of the hero, the villain. You don't want to go too far with that because if you go too far with the hero characteristics and you misapply them, then you're a villain. So if you remember going back to the, the talk about um, Aristotle's doctrine of the mean, that the, any virtue is a, is a midpoint between two vices. 
If you have too little courage, you're, you're a coward. If you have too much courage, then you're reckless. You don't want to be either of these two things. You want to be somewhere in the, in the middle. You want to be courageous. So courage is a, is a midpoint. Just like being honest. Um, if, you're, if you're not honest enough, you're a liar. If you're too honest, meaning if you just blab everything. I don't know. You're, you're a snitch. Or I was trying to figure out what the word was. If you're that person that nobody asks you for your opinion, but as soon as somebody walks in, you're like, oh, those shoes are ugly. I'm like, I didn't ask you what you talk about my shoes. Oh, I'm just being honest. Yeah, but nobody asked you. There's one thing to be honest, but it's also another thing to just blab everything that nobody asked you about. And so you don't want to be that person either, but you also don't want to be a liar. You want to be someone in the middle, a truth teller, but you're only telling essential truths. You're not telling the truth about how you feel about everything you're only, talk, you're only gonna share the truth about how you feel in certain, in certain circumstances when it relates to the context. So to be a hero then is maybe to do the right thing and maybe that's the thing that we can aspire to with regards to Superman. Uh, with Spider-Man, he struggles with that sometimes because he carries around a lot of guilt because, uh, because he didn't save his uncle, right? His uncle, right? Yeah, and that poor dude's gotta die every time they reboot the movie, dude. His uncle's always gonna die. It's gonna be continually funny. Yeah, poor guy's like, you know, hey, you know, good news, we're gonna cast you in the new Spider-Man movie. Oh, great. Wait, am I the uncle? <laughs> yeah, bad news, man. Yeah, 15 minutes of screen time, that's it. But he's relatable because he's, he's kind of nerdy. He's not, you know, he's, he's not like you know, super, I mean, even in terms of his superpowers, like he can climb walls and shoot webs out of his, out his hands and then he's strong and fast. Um, that's nice, but it isn't like a, like he can shoot laser beams out of his eyes. It's not like he can fly into space and back. That's why the, the most recent uh, Spider-Man, they made him kind of like a gawky kid, works out pretty well, actually, because it's relatable. But heroes don't just, we don't relate to heroes just because of what they are. We relate to them on those base levels. It's like, okay, I'm like the superhero in, in this way, and in that way, and in that way, and that's not enough, though. We also have to say, wow, but they have these other powers that they have. And it's not just the powers, it's their insistence on doing the right thing that we relate to. And that's what separates them from villains. Obvious. So in other words, what I'm saying is that the hero is kind of like this box here. Heroes give us something to aspire to. They give us something to aim at. Because if, I'm like, if you have these 10 characteristics and I'm just like you in these five ways, but these other five ways you, you surpass me, it gives me something that I can aim at. We're pretty similar in all these ways. Sure, I can't shoot webs out of my, out of my wrists, but I can fill in the blank of something. In other words, you do what you can because they come in, in gradations as well. It's like, oh, Spider-Man's a superhero. Yeah, but he's not Superman. You know, it's like I, I was talking about, about Batman. The only, the only real superhero. Now, what makes Batman the only real superhero? He doesn't have any powers. He doesn't have any powers. But he's got something. Money. Money. Ah, but that makes it harder. Think about it. What is, he's got these two faces. He's got the shadow, he's got the persona. What's his persona? Bruce Wayne. I don't know. I don't know if the persona is Bruce Wayne or if the persona is Batman. I don't know if his shadow is Batman or if his shadow is Bruce Wayne. It's hard to tell with that guy which one is which. Yeah, and, and what does Bruce Wayne do with his life? This is the amazing thing about Batman, by the way, as a, as a, as a hero. He's a real hero. What does Bruce Wayne do? He runs a company. He runs a company, and he does what? He's a playboy. He's a playboy, yeah. He runs around with a bunch of girls, he parties, he lives in mansions, he drives expensive cars, he's brash, he's arrogant. He's, he's rude. What's that? But Bruce Wayne also lost his parents. Bruce Wayne, well, he, well, he lose them. He knows where they are. But yeah, but then, yeah, and then, yeah, his parents are, his parents die. So, like, he even gets his money in a way that people are, are resentful about. He inherits the money from his parents. So this guy, he does everything he can to present himself as a hateable figure in the world. Why? Because he does that so that he can be this other thing that people will never suspect. In other words, he's willing to sacrifice himself, his own public image, in order to help people in ways that they'll never know that it's him who's helping. 
That's pretty dope, man. And you might think like, oh, he, but, but he's got money. Yeah, but that's, that, doesn't, that wouldn't matter if he wasn't also brilliant. That wouldn't matter unless he also developed himself to be able to do those things. In fact, the money is a hindrance. Think about if you were as wealthy as he was, if he would sit there at night and think, oh, I need to go fight some more crime and put myself in death's way. Or you're the person who'd say, oh, that, that, that Playboy persona, I'm gonna go live that Playboy persona. I'm just gonna live my life like that. That would be a pretty easy thing for most people. Just, oh, forget, I'll just, I'll just you know, you know, make the most of life that way. But he makes the, the most of life in the shadow, meaning in the hidden parts of himself. And those are the parts that people admire and look up to. And if you follow the movies, um, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy, wait, if you remember- Which he, one, Christian Bale? Yeah, the best one, the only one that really matters. Um, but the Christian Bale, if you remember, um, Two-Face, you know, Harvey Dent becomes Two-Face, if you don't know, but if you know, you know. Um, he's this public face, but the but public hasn't found out yet that he's a supervillain. He's, he's gonna become one, he's gonna be a bad guy. And he dies. And so Batman essentially says, tell them I did it. It's better that they think I killed a good man, and then that way he becomes like a martyr. He becomes an example for everybody of what they could be. It's like, you know, Harvey Dent, you know, crime fighter, un incorruptible, all the best parts of us, but he died. You don't want to find out that another hero fell. Because when heroes fall, yeah, they become more relatable to us, but they're useless to us when they fall. And this is one of the tragedies of, of, of our modern life. Like if I were to ask you, who, who do you admire? Who do you look up to? Who are your role models? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I would really ask you that. And, and think about who you might name if you were forced to name somebody. One of the most common answers I hear from, from people is Spider-Man for some reason. I mean, and I just think like, but, but he's not real. Like I'm talking like real life people. Who can you look at today in the world and go, I admire that person because of, of what they are. And so often we'll, we'll identify like some, some artist, some musician and say, I like them a lot. I like their music. Yeah, but, but, but are they a good role model? Are they, are they someone that you aspire to be like? Like when you look at them, you sit there and say, I want to be like that person. Or, I want to have their money. I want to have their fame. No, but, but the parts of the character, though. Like, you, look at the, like you go back to the, to the past, and I can't help but, but recognize that if you try to change the world, you remember what happens to you? What happens if you try to change? I talked to you about seven times. The world changes you. No. Well, I guess so. Permanently. Um, all right. Martin Luther King Jr. He had a dream. Then he got a head wound. Mm -hmm. What happened to him? He died. He died. How? Gunshot. He got shot. Malcolm X, same thing. Civil rights, tried to change the world. How did he? What happened to him? Dead. How? Gunshot. He got shot. Again. Yeah. JFK, tried to abolish the CIA, put the world on an even plane. Uh, even plane. What happened to JFK? He got shot. He, he got, got hit by the mafia. He got JFK. <laughs> he got shot. Gandhi, peace, love, non you know, uh, nonviolent resistance. What happens to Gandhi? Uh, he got shot again. He died. Or? Yeah, and, and 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 that was hard to do. He's skinny. How do you hit him, dude? I don't know, but I don't know. I don't, I don't understand why you don't just beat him up. He's he's like, he's like ninety pounds, but no, they shot him. Anwar Sadat, who signs the first peace agreement between the Arab world and Israel, ushering in the potential for world peace, finally. Oh, he got shot. Oh, yeah, he I got shot. Yeah, they were so happy for him in Egypt that they decided to have a parade for him. They said, oh, yeah, come on down. Wear something really bright and sit up front. <laughs> and then he got shot. John Lennon took a, took a break from his, from his busy wife-beating schedule to write the song Imagine about peace and love. Somehow he left out the whole domestic violence thing, but he, wants, he tries to change the world through music and what happened to, to John Lennon. OD. No, OD. He got shot. And he started going, you know, Lincoln, who used the slaves, gets freed from his body. How does that happen? He got shot. It's really funny when you look at the people who we lift up and we admire and we say, I want to be like so-and-so, or these were the historical figures who we could look up to and say, we want to be like these people. <clears throat> At least Jesus didn't get shot, though, right? Who? Jesus. Yeah, he got crucified. Dang it. Hold the parson, 
What's that? Rosa Parks didn't get shot earlier. Rosa Parks? Yeah. yeah. It wasn't her who did it, was it? It was it was it was uh, MLK. Rosa Parks just said nah. MLK tried to lead the movement. Sure. That's how he got shot. But they strike me as something like, especially like with Jesus, it strikes me. No matter what your beliefs are, no matter what your political or religious beliefs are, most people agree Jesus, pretty okay guy. Pretty all right guy. You know, most of us agree with that. And yet, if you think back to, to the history of the guy, when he's born, he's born outside of the city because there's a festival going on. There's no room for him and his family in the inn. He has to be born in a barn, in a manger outside of the town. That means something, by the way. And then as he gets older, he goes to the temple. There's no room for him in the temple. They won't let him in there. So he has to go outside of the temple. And then as he gets older, there's no room for him in his family. He has to go outside of his family. Even when the guy dies, he gets crucified outside the city, and then they bury him outside of the city. There's no room to bury him. Inside the city. This is a guy who perpetually lived on the outside of everything. And it's strange how it is that, that the world could not get along with the holiest man who ever lived, and yet somehow it embraces you and me. These people who we hold up as being our, our heroes, as being courageous, as being the people who we follow, the world couldn't get along with any of them. It killed them, it shot them, or crucified them, or put them to death by the sword. And yet somehow when we come along, it gives us a big hug and says, you're with us, you're part of us. These are people who couldn't go, I mean, why is it that we expect if we're going to do the right thing, why is it that we expect to be accepted everywhere? If you're being accepted everywhere, there's a really good chance you're not doing the right thing. And if you find yourself on the outside of things sometimes, you find yourself the target of the right kind of people, the right enemies, there's a really good chance that you're doing the right thing. But you're going to pay for it. But that's part of the hero thing, isn't it? Because you're sacrificing yourself because, let's face it, no greater love does anybody have but that they would give their life for their friends. Or that they would give their life for the right thing. Or that they would give their right, or, or even worse, I'm sorry, even better, they would give their life for people who won't even know their names. And yet they give their life for them because of a principle, because of an ideal. And that's one of the things that makes us hate heroes so much. Because every hero is an ideal. And every ideal is a judge. And every judge is the thing that reminds us that we're not the thing that we pretend to aspire to be like. So what do we do? Uh, MLK Jr., you guys know that he had children out of wedlock with his secretaries? That guy had all kinds of children all over the place, man. Some reverend, huh? <clears throat> Good. Now I don't have to aspire to be like him. I can find something wrong with MLK Jr., grab him and drag him down to my level and go, okay, now I feel more comfortable with him. Now think about Gandhi. Gandhi, you know Gandhi used to, uh, used to sleep naked in a bed with naked 12-year-olds, kids. And he did that, he said, so he could test his willpower. Why Would that really be a temptation for most, most people? Like if you put like a plate of steaming hot crap in front of me and give me a fork and say, all right, Scott, I want you to test your willpower. Don't eat that plate of crap. Done. <laughs> That's not really a temptation for me, man. But the fact that the guy said that he would sleep in a bed naked with 12-year-olds was a temptation fighter for him, that might tell you something else about Gandhi as well. So now, I don't have to aspire to be like him in these great ways. I can just call him a pedophile, drag him down to my level and go, okay, now there's nobody else, and just go one by one by one. JFK was cheating on his wife all the time. Um, uh, John Lennon was beating... Uh, Multiple, multiple accounts of domestic violence pulled everybody down from this high place. We're ignoring, of course, the outliers of what they did, and we're focusing on the, on the negative parts of them, but that allows us now to not feel so bad about ourselves. And this is why we have this, this tendency now to take villains, like Disney villains, and say, well, you understand why Cruella did what she did now, right? After that last movie, Cruella de Vil, we understand why from 101 Dalmatians, why she was so mean. It wasn't really her fault. Dude, she kills puppies and makes coats out of them. Yeah, but now we understand why. <laughs> and we're so fast to forgive the wicked people. And we're so fast to drag down the people who were, who were, who, who were, the, who were the ideals. Those ideals that judged us. That's part of what it is to be a hero, to do those things anyway. 
People are going to hate you. Why? Because they're not you. Because you remind them of what they're not. And if, you, and if you're going to do the right thing, then for goodness sake, don't expect to be accepted everywhere you go. Expect to make enemies. Expect that people are going to hate you. Expect that your reputation is not going to match with your character. Because people have to drag you down. Because what's the alternative? To lift themselves up? <laughs> no, be serious. What do you really want me to do? Lift yourself up. Oh, come on, but seriously, in real life, what do you want me to do? Lift yourself up. No, just drag them down. Makes life easier. Because so I can keep on doing what I'm doing and not have to face the, the judgment for it. And by the way, the worst kind of judgment, the self-judgment. So, here tales suggest that the price of courage is beyond our ordinary budget. It's, it's too costly for most of us. Some tales make us feel like it's just too costly. The cost is too much. And what's gonna happen if you try to change the world? What's the cost? You're gonna get shot. Maybe, maybe, at least metaphorically, for sure. And they tempt us to disown this common capacity. He's saying it's a common capacity. We have the capacity to transcend what's normal, to go outside of the boxes of what we think is possible and to become something greater. And that's the value of a hero. That's the value of a role model. Not that we admire them for every single thing that they did, but we admire them for the thing, or better yet, they give us a sense of what's possible. So here's a better way of looking at it. So MLK was flawed in all those ways, and yet he still did what he did? Man, maybe I can too. You know? JFK was flawed in the way that he was, and yet he still did what he did? Maybe I can too. But I would never want to write that song Imagine. What an overrated piece of crap that song is. I'll take obscurity over that. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticism?